talk about the uh, unification remote, which is a very fun and uh, so I am Tony uh, the RMB director of Swissbrand, and this is Pierre Lory, uh, security IT consultant. Okay, well, um, again, welcome everybody. Um, this talk is going to be a, a bit technical. Uh, I'm going to let Damien introduce uh, the very basic principles of uh, a bunch of tools we designed to do remoting of uh, the Android platform. So we are going to start with uh, the basics of remoting applications. So. Um, we have many ways to debug applications, uh, Android applications especially, and we need some other things to practice remoting. Google developed a lot of things, a lot of features to debug applications. First of all, we have the DDMS. The DDMS is the debug, uh, Dynamic Debug Debugging Monitor Server, which is used to uh, get a lot of information about the Dynamic VM um, in which run the, all the applications on the Android platform. We also have the logcat. Logcat is a kind of log, you know, implemented in the phone and uh, providing a lot of information about the application um, that is run on the, on the phone. But debugging, debugging has many drawbacks because it's a very low level. So it's uh, very difficult to modify <coughs> the, the So it's very difficult to modify the behavior of an application or just the inner state of the application. You cannot modify values or properties inside the application. It also requires Android debugger, debug bridge, which is ADB, um, a tool that is very used by uh, reverse engineer on Android platforms. And it provides only <laughs> a bytecode level access to the application. The only thing you can do with it just modify the bytecode, access some variable and properties. Well, it's very limited and uh, it's not very high level. Debugging is a feature that is very cool when you are, uh, when you are developing application, but it's not very convenient when you are a reverse engineer and you want to have an in-depth look in, uh, in the application to see what the application does, or how the application does this stuff, and also, what are the components and how these components interact with uh, each other? So, so, as I said, the beginning is very low level. It provides only uh, an access to the, to the bytecode properties, and you can also debug VMs. But, uh, the idea which uh, we try to, to, to have and we develop, if you know, uh, which is uh, talking about, uh, it's very sorry, it's stressed. <laughs> well, debugging has many drawbacks and we can go over these drawbacks by using remoting. Remoting is a bit higher level, uh, a, a higher level view of the application where when debugging, just give access to bytecode. Uh, remoting, give access to the. Well, I, I can do <laughs> Give access to, to the whole application and its core components. So the the idea behind Fino was to get um, a Java-like access to the application and um, be able to modify the behavior of the application, modify the the core components not by modifying bytecode or just properties, but just by having access, such, uh, the such access you have when you develop applications with uh, Eclipse, for instance. And also, the, this high level view of the application uh, make us able to modify or just alter the restrictions in place when you are developing with OB model. So, when a class is private, when a method, uh, method is private, or just a property is private, uh, we, are able, we, uh, we are able to modify this, uh, the visibility of the class of the method to gain access to private properties or private numbers, and uh, especially some information should not uh, have access to. 
The objective of this high-level view of the application is to interact deeply with the application, not being restricted by the debugging. In, if you're a debugging application, you have to connect to the, the DTMS, just have access to some properties and bytecode. code. So the, the main idea of remoting is just to uh, get a bit higher and have access to the core components just <coughs> as if we were developing in Java. How to do this? Uh, we'll, we developed a, a little tool called Freeno that, uh, use, that uses this, this techniques and method. So Freeno provides uh, an access to an application by simply injecting a little service in the application. And this service provides uh, an access to the application through an API. This API is very useful. So if we use some other tools installed on the phone, able to communicate with the API, we just can have a, a, deep, a deep look inside the application and modify its behavior. It's a, a way to a remote control application, but we need this service to be injected in order to take the control of the application. It's a kind of meta uh, for Android applications. We are just injecting a, a little piece of of code inside the application and uh, communicate this piece of code to do whatever we want with the application. But there, is a, there are some limitations for this method because you will have a great access to the application. We will have access to a lot of classes, a lot of, of components, but there are some limitations because we only see the components that are active in the application. That means we can only see uh, launched applications, launched activities, and also launched services, but not the one that are not instantiated inside the application. So it's uh, a bit limited, but it's uh, very, very efficient enough. That is, if you have some classes that are not instantiated, we can even get access because at any time in the application, this class is instantiated and referenced in a property. Just by having uh, access to the property, we can get a reference on this uh, on this class, and then manipulate the, the the context of the application. It uh, cannot send all your data to this to the NSA. Sorry, it's not uh, the the goal here. <coughs> we do not need a rooted phone to use this application. Well, rooting phone is, uh, uh, is very popular among uh, developers and reverse engineers because it provides uh, a deep access to the phone. But rooting has some drawbacks. If you root your phone, you may void your, war your warranty, and it can be a problem. It may also alter the behavior of the phone, and uh, that is the behavior of the applications. And it can also be detected. An application can detect if the, your phone is rooted and uh, decide to not to work for properly if uh, it's uh, working on a, on a rooted phone. Remoting applications do not need root access to the phone. We are going to install an application, a modified application with some piece of code inside and just communicate with the application. We do not need root access. We do not need USB debugging. And no ADB is used when remoting applications, unlike debugging, which is a, a mandatory. And of course, any special option uh, need to be set. You can run it as is on a classic phone. Uh, I mean, you can run it on the stock ROM, uh, not a, a Cyanogen mode ROM or anything else. Well, uh, just like Damien said, uh, we developed a bunch of tools. Uh, the first one is called Fino, and it's the core component of our solution. Uh, the idea of Fino is to just inject a service inside any existing application so that you can install the application on any phone and have the service available, the service API available to interact with the application internals. That's the very basics of how our tool works. So you have Fino the service that is injected. And you have two other main components. The first one is called Gadget. Uh, it's actually a service client for the Fino service API. 
on the Android phone, on the Android system, uh, the service model uh, provided by the operating system uh, allow us to provide public APIs on the phone uh, given an API definition. That's what Fina do. Um, Gadget only does uh, the opposite part. It is the client that connects to the Fina service and forward our request from the network. So basically, we have uh, the Fino service injected inside the application. This service provides a service API over the f on the phone. This, has, this API is public. And we have the gadget server, which is actually a client for the Fino injected service. And the gadget server acts as a proxy. So we have developed a TCP-based protocol to interact with the gadget server. And every call we make to the gadget server is actually forwarded to the service API provided by Fino. This grants us with the possibility, the ability to contact the internal of the, internals of the application via the Fino service from any computer of the, net, the network. You just have to have TCP access to the phone. So we do not need USB debugging. We do not need any USB cable to remote the phone, to remote the application. We can do this over the Wi-Fi network. Any wireless network will work. We can do this over the, uh, over the operator network, over the mobile operator network. That is very useful for some security assessments or, or whatever. And because we can do this from our computer uh, with a very simple, basic TCP-based pro protocol, we can develop any client to interact with the internals of the applications. And that's what we did. We developed a bunch of tools, a bunch of libraries written in Python to interact with the internals of applications that are installed on our phones so that we can, using only Python scripts, interact dynamically with the application internals. That grants us with the possibility to script uh, modifications, debugging, uh, anything you would like to do with your application's internals. So I will try and give you a short demonstration of how Fino actually works and how you would do it on a real application. So here, on the right, you have my phone. It's a real phone. It's not uh, an emulator. I have it right here. And I will interact with the phone very simply. And you can see wh whatever happens there. And on the left, I have a terminal where I have the client installed the famous gadget client I talked to you about, the whole set of library in Python, and a very simple Python shell to interact with the application. On the right, on the phone, I launch Gadget. Gadget is the proxy server. Gadget does connect to applications that are uh, injected with our Fino services and provides us with the network uh, service API. So I can just start and stop the Gadget server and connect to it. For the purpose of the demonstration, we used uh, ADB forward because it's simpler. We do not need a wireless network. But you could use any network to connect to the application. It's just basic TCP connection. So uh, I think it's this part. OK. I will redo the forward. OK. Here, I just connected my uh, shell.py, which is the, the Python client, to my gadget server. And the gadget server retrieved for me the list of applications that are injected with my Fino service. I can now connect to any of these applications. And I have one very interesting here, the com.sysdream.demo1, that we will have a look at. So I can just start my first demonstration. Uh, oh, snap. Actual snap. <laughs> I will restart the application. So, oh, snap, the title is wrong. We're not at CCC anymore. We are at Hack in Paris. So maybe we could do something about that. So first, I can list my application. And I can connect to my application if the demo gods are good with me today. Yes. So now I have a shell, a Python shell, very simple. And it's pure Python. I can do whatever I want in Python. I can script that and launch my script with the, the Python shell. I have my Python shell with a couple of variables already set. The most interesting one is app. App is a wrapped instance of my application. There is a high level of abstraction and a couple of utility functions that we provide with the client already. So those utility functions are developed 
in the Python libraries. And I have one very interesting utility function, which is list activities. List activities grants me with the ability to list activities that are launched inside the application. So I have one activity launched right now, which is the main activities. I can retrieve this instance of the main activity of my application. And I can do whatever I want with the activity. I could finish the activity to stop the application. I won't do that. I could access the activity title, just like any variable in Python. But what I just wrote, act.mtitle, is actually sent over the network, interpreted by the gadget server, forwarded to the Fino service, and executed inside the Java application. So I actually access the property of my application, which is, which is launched on the phone, with some very basic Python. And I could set the title. I could call some methods inside the application. I could set the title, right, and refresh my activity so that the new title is displayed. Yeah. And provided with the name of my application and with the little string on the, on the screen, maybe we could guess that there, are, there is some obfuscation technique used inside there. Maybe inside the application, strings are obfuscated. And that's what we can uh, access by just accessing the bytecode of the application. So I disassembled the application, and here is a sm Smiley file. Smiley is the one of the low-level languages for Dalvik bytecode, the bytecode that is executed on the Android phones. And here I can see an obfuscated string in the famous class named com.sysdream.demo1.ofu. Maybe, maybe I could reverse the algorithm using usual reverse engineering techniques, but maybe also I could use some tricks inside my application to access this class and to make it deobfuscate the string for me. Because the, the, deobfuscation, the deobfuscation algorithm is already implemented inside the application. So I could get the class from Fino simply provide it with the name of a class, oh, demo1.opfu, and it will retrieve for you the class object inside Java. So I can get the class object, and I can interact with the class like any other Java class. I can, for instance, see what properties it has. It does have this famous string properties, which is obfuscated, and it also has a get method. The get method is the deobfuscation method. I can simply call it. I do not need to reverse the obfuscation algorithm. I simply need to use the application to do it for me. So that's very useful when reverse engineering and you uh, gain a lot of time. Maybe we could go on with some more interesting demonstration, which is more about remoting that reverse engineering than reverse engineering. So, oh, I had some slides prepared. I'm very sorry. Um, <coughs> The principle of injecting the, an application with the Fino service is very basic. You just take the application, you disassemble it, you take the Fino service, you disassemble it, you merge the two, you patch your way into making it work, there are a lot of dirty hacks inside there, and you reassemble the whole thing, and you get an injected application. That's very basic. So sorry about the slides, I will just skip them and let Damien uh, work with his remoting script. Sorry. Well, uh, I'm going to present um, a proof of concept we developed with Fino, because Fino can be used as a reverse engineering tool, as uh, uh, Pierre showed us, but it can also be used to create tools. And this is an another aspect of this tool. This is very interesting because we can use some Java application, Java um, application created for the Android platform, but also use this, uh, this application in order to be remote controlled. We can, we can for instance, create a DTMF fuzzer uh, in order to, to fuzz other systems. So before presenting the, the technique behind this, I'm going to just uh, make a, a short presentation of what IVO is. IVO means interactive voice response. So it's a server running that handles uh, communications, voice communications over the, the phone network. 
and it provides the voice service to the customer generally. Um, I mean, if you have an answering service uh, provided by your telco, it is an RVR service. And all the interaction between your smartphone or your phone and the RVR is based on what we call DTMF. DTMF is a, a method to send commands over the, the phone system. And it's uh, based on a dual tone multi frequency system, and it's generally supported by a lot of phones. Further, the DTMF consists in sending a large amount of data, DTMF sequences, that is, over the phone network in order to see how the IVR service reacts to what we send to it. Usually, we use uh, specific RVR testing systems to assess the security of uh, this RVR, but it's really not affordable. It costs uh, a lot of dollars or euros. Uh, you have many well-known RVR te uh, testing systems, such as Nubot or Callmaster, uh, which cost a lot. And it also requires specific hardware, because you have to, to buy some JSM gateways in order to, to create a lot of connections or just have uh, multiple, multiple lines uh, to uh, parallelize the process. So it's, it costs. Using Android phones is cheaper because Android phones are, are very affordable. It's also open source so we can develop our own system, our own testing system. And Android phones may be tweaked to allow IVR testing. So it's uh, something very, very tricky to, uh, to, um, to design and uh, implement, but we did it. Basically, the uh, Android-based RVR testing system is based on an, an application running on the phone. Inside this application, we have already injected the Finos service that uh, make it uh, easily remote controlled. And we also created a Python script called DTMF first, that uses the gadget proxy and the Finos service to con remote control the application and then drive the DTMF further. Well, this is not very easy to create this kind of system because uh, you need to have a very uh, low level access to the phone because only the phone application installed on your Android system is able to communicate with the baseband. So you have to first read your, on your phone in order to have this access. It's not uh, working for having, uh, or being able to install a lot of applications, but the goal here to the need uh, to read your phone is just to be able to assign an application to create a system application that will, will drop inside the system applications directory. Second, you have to patch ADT. ADT is a plugin for Eclipse. Uh, maybe there are some developers over there that uses, use this plugin and uh, the Eclipse ID. And this plugin uh, has some rules that deny access to com.android.internal.everything. This namespace is used to um, access a lot of internal classes that are not intended to be used by Android developers. So patching ADT, it's, it's, it's monetary because we, ha we have to remove the rule st uh, stating that we do not have access to this namespace. So just by patching the file, we can get access to internal classes. So the goal is to create a system application with access to internal classes to get an access to the phone and the baseband in order to dial some numbers and send the TMF. We also need to build an Android.jar uh, specific file uh, containing all the internal classes because if we do not uh, do this, we, the application will not be able to communicate with the internal classes. And also, you have to hack into the phone application. Uh, hacking with the, in, into the phone application means that we have to run our application inside the process of the phone application, which is the basic uh, phone um, application installed on Android. That application is responsible of creating communications, dial numbers, and, um, and so on. And eventually, just compile, sign, and deploy the application on the Android mobile, mobile phone. So first of all, we have to create a system application. We need to import in Java a lot of classes, and especially 
chrome.android.internal.telephony.everything because we need some classes like phone class and fa phone factory class. Just with one end of Java, we will be able to retrieve a phone instance. And we also need to modify the Android manifest.xml file in order to make the application running into the phone process. If we do not, uh, if, we, if we don't do this, we will not be able to, to get access to the phone. Once we have a phone instance, we can use the dial method to dial numbers. And to send the TMF, we also have a, a quick hack, a quick and dart hack uh, performed here. We can get the active call by using the get foreground call method and then use the send the TMF uh, on the get phone, the result of the get phone method. Used. And using this, we are able to simulate a user pushing buttons on, your on, on the phone and then send commands to the RVR system. We are also able to record the, the entire conversation, conversation um, thanks to uh, Android again, which provides a very useful class called Media Recorder. And Media Recorder can be used to just uh, save or record the conversation to a file with a 3GPP file format. But there are some limitations to this. We can only get the done link. We will not hear uh, the uh, DTMF we sent. To, to the remote IVR system, but we get the, the result. Eventually, to install the application, you need to sign it with the same private key used to sign all the system applications. And this is why you need to read your phone in order to uh, install this uh, DTMF further. Because if you do not sign the application with the exact private key used by the, um, the, the people who designed the worm, uh, your application will not be recognized as a, as a system application and cannot be run on your phone. So this is the explanation of the waiting, uh, waiting step. So all you have to do then is just remount the root in order to push the application in the system app directory. Once, in, uh, once, you, once done, this uh, application will be available on your phone and then you can use it with Fino. Well, let's do some demo about uh, DTMF fuzzing. Uh, yeah. So Pierre is going to demonstrate this, uh, this uh, little application, this DTMF further we developed. Uh, first of all, you have two, uh, two, uh, two parts in the screen. Uh, on the right part, you have my phone, uh, which is a, a screen uh, uh, with the same method as, uh, uh, as Pierre's. And on the uh, left part, we have the console, the terminal, with uh, uh, our Python script displayed. So it's a, a kind of a very short script in Python using gadget client, which is the, the Python framework we developed to communicate with Fino. So uh, this uh, script just dials my uh, answering service provided by my Deco. And this uh, application then fills uh, some DTMF just by sending a, a to, if, I remember, uh, if I remember well, 10 uh, random DTMF uh, character, just uh, simulating 10, button, 10 buttons pushed by the user. And this script also records the entire conversation, so we will be able to, to get it later and just have a look at uh, what the conversation was when fuzzing. Well, actually, the output, uh, audio output is connected to this uh, system and you will be able to hear the conversation. I don't know if you're ready. 
Well, there is a shell on my phone with uh, uh, all the final applications installed. And uh, DTMF first just uses the effort that uh, virtual app that, uh, uh, well, what is it? The DTMF first, which is the APK installed on my mo mobile phone and uh, providing the access to the phone subsystem. Well, can go. So on the right side, the application need. <laughs> wow. Uh, well. <laughs> uh, yes, it's better with Python. <laughs> so on the right side, we have a phone, and on the left side, the <coughs> controlling applications. So it's, uh, well. We don't have much sound. Well, maybe we're going to restart this demo. The God of demo is not with us today. No sound? Uh -huh. Well, so connecting to the application. Yes. <laughs> so here the application is remotely controlled by my Python script and is just dialing the answering service and starting phrasing. So, uh, no sound? No sound. <laughs> Uh, then, so uh, just the, the application is fuzzing and uh, we. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> Again? Yeah. Uh, if it works? Of course. It's a bit uh, unstable. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try one last time. Uh, connecting, yes, perfect. So it, it's dialing again. <laughs> well, it's a bit fuzzy, let the go. Well, the application sends sends randomly. <laughs> so to, to be a, uh, uh, a bit more precise, the application sends sends randomly some DTMF sequences, and this causes the the mess you you heard because uh, the application reacts to the DTMF send, and uh, of course uh, there is a path. Uh, defined in the hardware system, and you, uh, the path must be followed uh, by customers to get a lot of services, uh, such as uh, such as uh, my uh, answering service. Um, and by sending some DTMF sequences that are not uh, uh, that are un correctly handled by the, f the hardware system, we can find some. Uh, sometimes we can find some uh, some vulnerabilities. Uh, some uh, debugging access or something like that. And this is very, very interesting. Well, the system uh, we showed us, uh, we showed you, sorry, today, uh, it's 100% uh, based on Android system and uh, using Fino as the remoting uh, as control, uh, controller. Right. Well, it costs uh, almost uh, anything. I'm just using my personal phone. Uh, and uh, just some hours of development. Well, uh, I'm not sure we have much time left, uh, but we have a very last demonstration uh, to illustrate one of the most powerful features of the bunch of tools we developed. Um, we thought, well, what use is there of a remoting system if we can cheat at games with it? So we started thinking about what way we could try and write some software to cheat at games. And we remembered uh, our young gamer life uh, cheating with the famous action replay on PlayStation. And we tried and developed something similar on uh, the Android system using Fino. To do that, we developed a macro layer of the Fino service, uh, we are now able on Fino to write some Java code 
on the computer side, to write some Python code on the computer side to wrap all these Java things, to compile the Java code, to send the binary over the network, and to inject binary code inside the application dynamically. So the application is running, and we inject classes. We inject bytecode inside the application dynamically over the network without having to restart anything. That's the macro layer we, the, we used on Sphino. So it's very simple. You have the Java source. You compile it to an APK. Uh, you upload the APK to the phone. It's imported as a Java class. You can instantiate that Java, that Java class. You get a macro instance. And you have all the Fino Python abstractions to manipulate your new macro instance. Uh, we developed a macro that acts just like the action replay uh, back in the PlayStation time. How did we manage to develop such a thing? It's very basic, actually. Um, we use uh, a simple Java class. Uh, I will not, uh, could show you the Java class we developed. Um, it's not in there. It's in cache comments, macros, replay. We developed a Java class, uh, which is here, replay.java. This Java class does one thing and does it well. It just brews the internals of the application from one point. It, takes, it has very simple functions. Don't try and read the code. It's all ugly. But it just takes one variable, one value, and tries and brews all the attributes recursively until it finds some attributes that have that value. It stores the references to those attributes. And then you can filter uh, this list of attributes that had the initial value given the new value, just like you did on the action replay. Remember, you just set an initial value. It grabs for you the list of places in the memory where that value is set. And at any time, any other time, you give uh, the new value to the system, and it will filter this list of first memory places and narrow the search to the one or two or three memory places that uh, match the value you are modifying. This, is, this works very well uh, with gaming application, with games. For instance, I will first restart my gadget server and start a very simple game called Jewels. Maybe you know the principles. No, I don't. No, please. Name update. No, please. Okay, I'm gonna try again. Yes, okay. So I have my very simple game with uh, fancy sounds. Uh, the principle is simple, just make points, have the right score, and win the game. We'll try and hack our way into the game using Fino. So I have already injected the game application with the Fino service, so I can interact with it. Um, Maybe it's listed. I have to follow the port again. No, not this one. Not this one either. This one. So, sorry, that's not the right one. Yes. So I have the list of applications, and this one is um, mhgames.jewels.com. Uh, Org.mhgame.jewels. Uh, so I will. run Fino inside the application. So now I have a shell that is inside the application, and I have my application. I can, for instance, list the activities, and if everything is right, I have two activities inside the application, oh, no, one, only one, which is the dual activity, and it, which is the one displayed uh, currently on the screen. So I could interact with this uh, activity, but that's not my point right now. I'm trying to cheat at the game. And what value would I like to modify? Of course, the score of the game. So I could reverse the application. Unfortunately, the bytecode has been uh, obfuscated, so I cannot reverse it very simply. I could list all the integers, try them one after another. That would not work very well. I will instead use my macro. So I I can import my replay class, with, which is the Python wrapper of uh, the Java class I just showed you earlier. I import that one, and I will instantiate that one. I will give it 
the application instance so it can start searching from the application root and I will give it the current value of the score. Of course, I will not start with zero because there are a lot of zero values inside an application constants and so on and it would give me maybe 100, 200 attributes. I will start with some non-null score if I'm very lucky. Here, 10. I tell the replay module that the current score is 10 and it will search for me the variable inside the application whose value is 10. Takes a bunch of time because it goes recursively. The default depth is uh, of three. So it will take all the attributes of the application, then for every attribute, go inside the attributes of the attribute, and so on three times. It takes a couple of seconds, and it, it does it very well because it has narrowed the search to 19 entities. I have 19 attributes inside my applications, which are all named here, which have currently the value 10. So I will modify the score and for instance here. My new score is of 20, so I will tell the replay module that the new score is 20. And it will scan again all these attributes and run the search to two entities. So there are two entities with obfuscated names that had the value 10 initially and that now have the value 20. I will play a very last time to be sure that these two entities are the right ones. So the current score is 30. Well, there are, still, there are still two entities. Maybe those two entities are both the score. I will try and modify them. So I have a very simple set function to modify the score. I'm not sure which score would fit. This one should do the... Maybe it's just a refresh problem? Right. <laughs> For the conclusion, let's try and put Hack in Paris on top scores ever of jewels. <laughs> I hope it's enough. Yes, we're number one. <laughs> Oh no. no, we're not number one, I should have put more, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's it. Uh, I'm not sure uh, you have many questions, but maybe you do. And none all, not all of them are stupid, so please go chat if you have any question. Yes? You could inject inside the phone, but uh, you would have to modify the APK of the application or, or to modify the bytecode inside the phone directories. And to do that, you would need root access, of course. But we could develop an injection uh, application that does the injection given the root access. But it's not uh, malware we developed. And being not a malware, we cannot inject inside applications because the Android security model is quite good enough. Well, if there are no more questions, uh, just know that uh, everything we developed is free. It's developed as free software, and you are very welcome to contribute uh, to Fino. So here are the GitHub path, and just ask us. We will do merges. We will give you right access to the repositories. We don't know, but it's free software, so feel free to contribute. The free software, uh, the DTMF further is not uh, already online. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to, uh, to push it on the, on the GitHub. So uh, it will be available very soon, I think. Um, thank you a lot for watching. <laughs>